Hello everybody, my name is Susana Rosado and I'm a professor at Lisbon School of Architecture. The other author of this work is Jorge Tavares Ribeiro. He's a professor at the Lisbon School of Architecture and a researcher at the Natural Resources and Environmental Research Center, both from the University of Lisbon. So this work is about the impact of STEAM education on master and PhD theses from students of Lisbon School of Architecture of the University of Lisbon. We want to assess how these science, technology, engineering, arts and mathematics education on master and PhD students theses are getting an influence on their work and the developing of their work. To quote two important philosophers and thinkers, first Leonardo Vici of the 15th century and then Carl Sagan from the 20th century, Leonardo da Vinci said that to develop a complete mind study the science of art, study the art of science develop your senses, especially learn how to see, realize that everything connects with everything else. Carl Sagan said it is, it is suicidal to create a society dependent on science and technology in which hardly anybody knows anything about science and technology. So the aspects of this work, we, first, we first are going to talk a bit about the STEM education and then the STEAM education, so including arts and not including arts. Then we have some MSc examples about how mathematics is useful in arts and it's being used as um, an instrument to help to develop master theses. The same about PhD theses. We are having two examples for that also, and then conclusions about this work. Human culture around the world has been driven by creative advances in several areas, like science, like technology, philosophy, art, and humanities. Creative thinking is much more than having spontaneous ideas that may or may not lead to something substantial. It is a competence that is acquired, a tangible competence based on knowledge and practice, which allows achieving better results often in restricted and challenging environments. That's why mathematics helps this uh, competence helps uh, a person to better create in a systematic way and being able to um, create in those challenging environments. Organizations and societies around the world increasingly rely on innovation and knowledge creation to face emerging, emerging challenges giving urgency to innovation and creative thinking as collective initiatives. So, thinking about the STEM and the STEAM education as being one without arts and the other with arts, according to Orta, the STEM goals were to increase the proficiency of all students in science, in technology, in engineering and in mathematics, in order to improve the ability of students to address increasingly complex problems, to employ STEM concepts and apply creative and innovative solutions to their daily lives. Another goal was to increase the number of students who pursue STEM careers and advanced studies by raising awareness of the importance of STEM and by raising interest in STEM subjects. The reasons for these strategies 
STEM skills are understood as critical to foster economic development, while occupations are among the highest paying, fastest growing, and most influential in driving innovation. STEM graduates enjoy low unemployment rates as well in most of the countries. Portugal is showing rapid progress in improving baseline qualifications, including STEM education, according to OECD reports. So, but with a hasty use focused on leisure and the immediate technologies that make everyday life easier, we must make STEM education more attractive. Adding the arts to the STEM education can bring a breath of fresh air to education, providing a more interesting and appealing approach as it simulates sensory awareness. The lack of creativity and innovation in recent graduates has compelled STEM education. Currently, our educational system rarely encourages self-motivation and inquisitiveness and students are mainly sought to perform certain tasks fluently. So adding arts to the, st the STEM was, uh, had the objective of giving uh, creativity and innovation in their courses. So helping them to have a sensory awareness of the problems. So in a schematic way for us to understand better the difference between the STEM and the STEAM education, in the STEM education, arts wasn't included. So there was only knowledge about science, technology, engineering and mathematics and the combination between them to reinforce students to be uh, have the abilities in these areas since they were the economy driven uh, jobs. Including arts in the STEM education, uh, it gave more creativity to the students, it had a sensor of uh, awareness about stuff and it was important for them. The idea of this work is to acknowledge this different approach of the STEAM education. It's something like adding mathematics to the teaching of arts, to the teaching of architecture. How does mathematics helps you uh, in developing the, the, the tools you need to implement architecture knowledge. So architecture includes technology, includes science, includes engineering, includes arts, and mathematics will help also to a systematic thinking and a systematic creativity uh, to get solution for the problems in architecture. So this is the first example in MSc degree, how mathematics helps to systematize all the information you need. For example, this example was a summary table of the reference cases for the master's final project of the student Carolina Barreira. The theme was Rehabilitate for Shelter intergenerational housing in the rehabilitation of the former Convento da Boa So the idea was in columns, she put the reference cases, o Bloco das Águas Livres, Lustur, and the Convento das, Bermudas, das Bernardas. Sorry. In the lines, we had a photo of the place, then we had the program about it, how, what she was going to use on the proposal, the critical analysis of strategies used, and the conclusions about it. So this could synthesize 
what she wanted to use, for example, no blog das águas livres, the community aspects and its relationship with the housing, for example, no Convento das Bernardas, the convent matrix she wanted to use, as the rehabilitation was also in a convent. So this table would help her to synthesize the information she wants to use from the reference cases and to help her to have ideas of what interventions she wanted to do in her work. Also about the same work, Carolina Barreira also made a table synthesizing her case study, Convento da Boa Hora. So she defined in each of the wings of the Convento, in the south wing, on the east wing and the north wing, she defined units, small units in the south wing. She had 12 small units. East wing, she had three units. In the large unit, she had six ones on the north wing and so she was able to define what kind of a comp occupants would have in each one of them and what kind of characteristics they would have and having a table like this synthesized like this it would be much easier for her to think about the program she wanted to do and about all the creativity and all the creation she wanted to make in her project. So about the second example, MSC example two, it's about revitalized military barracks, temporary residence for emergency housing in Quartel dos Lanceiros 2, in Ajuda, in Lisbon. So here this table, it's a big table, it has synthetization about some aspects in Colin about the urban territorial about the program here I can highlight it about the uh, urban and territorial uh, importance in case references here about the program she wanted to use and here about uh, interventions made in some examples. Okay, she, this student was Matilde Fernandes and she wanted to make a much complete table about her reference cases. In lines, we have the program, we have the distinction between public and private spaces, the areas here, <clears throat> the areas here about uh, interior, exterior transition and about uh, the ambiences here, down here. And the cases were Campo das Cebolas here in Portugal. Term Vals in Switzerland, Farms Worst House in the United States, Crest Apartments also in the United States, Castel Vecchio in Italy, and Ashley Castle in England. Those were the examples she wanted to use. So here <clears throat> about the assesses in those two cases. Okay, here about using the old and the new connected with each other. Here how the intervention was made, relation with the old and the new. Here the tones, the colors used in the interiors to make the ambiences and so on. And after having a table like this to synthesize all the information about the reference cases, it's much easier for the creativity process to begin because you have a visual synthesization of the information and it's much more productive the next step of your work. The ideas you want to have, 
for the urban scale, for the uh, facade scale and the spans, and for the interiors. So the first example of the PhD degree about how mathematics helps to synthesize information and to analyze and treat data. It was a vernacular technology versus global technology creation of a project methodology for developing countries. It's from Julio Batista and the idea was to use the information of Climatology, geology, pedology, phytogeography, and ethnography use all those layers of information of the potential areas you want to study and make a pilot project and have quick answers about the handling, their update, and new techniques about the appreciation, appreciation of local culture and local economy and how to make projects about it. So the five maps were overlapped using GIS, resulting with a new map of Angola. This work was in Angola. Okay, so each color represents an area with common information relating to natural resources and environmental conditions for the construction. If you click on one of these areas, you would have all that information about the five topics we saw. So three, three southwestern areas were picked up as examples under the direction of the axis of the Namib railway track that represents areas with different physical geographical features. Okay, we have the railway here and the idea was in those five um, maps collected wanted to know the conditions in which we were going to be working in those three areas and to understand what kind of project we could be developed there with all the synthesized of the conditions in those zones. So about the climate comfort and passive strategies, project one would have a natural ventilation and the, and the scheme, schematic of the project would be like this. For project two, it would use a, a thermal inertia and it would be a project pilot project like this. And for the third area, it would be a thermal inertia insulated and would be like this. About the main local materials in project one, the elements used and the local materials used, and the project would be like this. For project two, the elements would, the local materials used, and for the third project also. So the different layers would give you this information about uh, all the areas chosen. So another PhD degree example is about buildings selected for a network buildings, new centralities. Okay. There were chosen different buildings for different areas in Lisbon. And uh, the idea was to assess if they were network buildings or not. There were buildings in the main domain of architecture and uh, about the urban accessibilities, the variables studied were the function of the building, the parking, the ground release, the multifunctionality, and about the urbanism and architecture, about the accessibilities, the security, the pedestrian access, the permeability, the public spaces, and the green areas. So a table was built about the functions, uh, about the variables used, definition of those variables, and the idea was to, with these variables, define a network building and to assess if the buildings uh, chosen for the sample were network buildings or not.
using stati statistical techniques. So a complete disjunctive matrix was constructed with the variables and the values obtained by the sample so that the data could be analyzed to understand if the buildings were um, network buildings or not. Having a index about those who are uh, network buildings, okay, which had some kind of a function, some time of a ground release, so they were defined as um, a network building so that we had an index to compare with the others and uh, to define what was a not network building that does uh, so is the complementary of the other one. This doesn't have that function, doesn't have the ground release and so on to compare and to see which ones were uh, network buildings or not network buildings. So as a result of the data analysis, 37 buildings were classified and there's here examples of one building that is a network building, one that is in the middle, classified as in the middle, and one that is not. Okay, here Montpujeral buildings, Pig Panther building and the building of the Rome Avenue. This was the classification obtained of the 37 buildings using those variables and comparing them. So with this work, we highlighted the fundamental role that mathematics can play in areas of knowledge in the field of the arts, such as architecture and urbanism. This study could somehow counter some prejudices related to the role of mathematics in the creativity sector and even reverse the underlying concept in the STEAM education approach that aims to incorporate the arts in the STEM education. We wanted to make more than that to implement mathematics in arts and make it a real um, tool for helping uh, architects to create, helping students to understand how systematic thinking helps to create. Demonstrated that this pedagogical methodology of STEM teaching can be understood in the complementary direction, that is the importance of incorporating mathematics in the teaching of the arts and the tools it provides in the development of their abstract thinking, of their capacity for synthesis to better develop thinking, creativity and all the methodical ability to collect, process and analyze information crucial for the development of research in architecture. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope you, you enjoyed this work and the usefulness of mathematics in teaching in architecture with MSc and PhD students.